may be off with my years, but I want to say it was around 82, 83 when you guys submitted a song to Q107's Home Front Club. 83. When you guys submitted that song at that time, the song was New Girl Now, which Honeymoon Suite fans know so well now. In your wildest dreams, did you ever expect that song to be the beginning of what became such a national phenomenon? No, and, and a quick story. That song was written by Derry when he was in college. And I went to school with Derry. We both went to the same college, Fanshawe College, London, Ontario. We took the music course there. And it was a great chorus. And he wrote that song, and it was just a song. And I don't think he thought much of it, and I, with all due respect, didn't think much of it. We thought he had better songs. And when they entered into the homegrown contest for Q107, that was the one that they liked. That was the one that they played. It eventually won a national contest, and that was the first single. And, uh, and it did, initially, in early 1984, when the record came out, it did much better in the U.S. than it did in Canada. It did much better at radio in the U.S. The video did very well at MTV, and that's where initially our fame came from, and then Canadians sort of piggybacked a bit to that. So I'm taking a long time to answer your question. That's okay. This but, is all very good stuff. But um, yes and no. I mean, we liked it. We still like it. I still love playing it. like the first time you played an arena because I know as a kid being in a band 15 16 there was always that dream of what would that be like to get on the stage at Maple Leaf Gardens where the Leafs play because you see concerts there yeah. but to know that you're being surrounded by 16 18,000 fans what was that like first time um, nerve-wracking yeah um, that's one of the shows you're talking about right well that was a little further into our career but before that in 84 we immediately started we got on a um, uh, an April wine tour and, uh, and initially, excuse me, Corey Hart was the opening act, and he got sick. He got his throat couldn't handle it. So we were in northern Quebec. We were about two hours north of Quebec City, and we were told you're playing in London, Ontario tomorrow, opening for April Wine, a Canadian tour. Wow. So we had to drive all night after driving all day to get there. Yeah. Right? And so that was the first sort of big arena show. We had played Canada's Wonderland, I think, before that opening for someone. Uh, but and then and then it just gets bigger and then we went to the states and did a tour in the fall of 84 with um, Jethro Tull believe it or not and that was all hockey arenas so it wasn't a very successful tour for them right. uh, and when we went on you know we went on to you know golf applause really there was yeah. hardly anybody there and I used to say I felt like it was a WHA game there was right. hardly anybody there <laughs> but we went over pretty well yeah. and but we played you know all you know from Joe Lewis in Detroit, the Montreal Forum, Vancouver p and &E, the L.A. Forum. I think I played the L.A. Forum maybe half a dozen times. Is it more surreal when you look back at it than when you were in the moment? Because you, you've got a job to do, right? Uh, yes and no. I mean, when you're opening acts, people aren't really there to see you. And, and, and the theory was at the time, it's best to go on and play in front of a few thousand people and, and win them over as opposed to maybe playing a small club to 100 people or 200 people or whatever, whether that was true or not. But it was, it was good for us. It got us tight, got us used to playing big stages again and um, or playing big stages for the first time. Uh, and so it was surreal at the time. It is kind of surreal now that it was so long ago and uh, that a lot of these bands have, are still doing it. And uh, you realize how, again, how lucky we were to, to get in those positions. You mentioned the videos. Was Wave Babies as much fun to make as it was to watch? Watching you playing the the, the pails oh. and, and... Torture, uh, torture. Really? Torture to watch me and, this, and again, the stupid faces I was encouraged to make. Um, but also, believe it or not, that video was very hard to make.
was over three days uh, at the end of May 1985 and uh, I remember remember the, named after you the Barry tornado right oh yeah oh I remember that that was that weekend yeah so we were in Picton Ontario and I remember they 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 had a hotel for all the girls and all the crew but we were made to stay at someone's cottage because they didn't trust us with the girls. Rock stars. Well, it was like really, and then and then they made us get up at like at four o'clock in the morning to come in for makeup because they wanted to take advantage of the sun. So our day would start like at four o'clock in the morning, and then and then go until you know nine o'clock at night. And so that was three days in a row. So it was it was awful in that respect. So it, it was not enjoyable. The weather was colder than you thought it would be, uh, but. It was a very good video. It came out very, very well. A great director for that, uh, and uh, of course, it's it's still remembered by everybody to this. And oh, yeah. the girls, with all, and we didn't get to know the girls on a personal level. Level, and they were lovely. Yeah. They were the nicest girls, and they weren't being paid. They were making no money. Really. And uh, uh, we had a wonderful time in that regard. They were lovely. You mentioned having fun. You mentioned having a wonderful time. You also touched on the fact that you left the band for a while in the 90s. What led to you to wanting to get out? Was it just a matter of, I'm done with this lifestyle? Was there personal reasons? What, what led to that? Um, yeah, I was kind of done with it. I was, I was not motivated uh, as a musician anymore. Uh, my playing wasn't really that good. And, uh, and I wasn't really, you know, times were changing. I wasn't really excited about where the band songs were going to expect, and in reality, they were willing to make a change too, because you know they hadn't done anything for, I hadn't played in a long time. They still had a record deal, but clearly we weren't a big deal at, at our label anymore. So they wanted to move on and try different players too. So it was very lucky that we all ended on a good note, on a positive note, really. And uh, and I wanted to try something different, and so I did work in the industry. I worked at SoCan for 11 years. Wow. And uh, enjoyed that very much, and uh, but it also gave me more of a desire to get back into playing, and and more desire to get back into practicing, which I wasn't doing enough of when I was a professional musician. So, uh, and then once I hooked up with these guys again in the early 2000s, I really wanted to get back together. And fortunately, they said, "Well, let's try and do an original lineup," and we did for a while. And now we're four of the five original guys, and we're lucky because. A lot of the bands we play, except for Loverboy, there's maybe one guy yeah. if they're lucky. And so Loverboy and us is four out of the five or original guys. Or you be like guys. Foreigner when you don't even have one member of the original band. We right? did a tour with Foreigner. Yeah, I know. And um, the one I know guy Mick Jones is there sometimes. Yes, very he good. He runs the band, but he doesn't always play with them. So there are nights where you're seeing Foreigner without a single original member of yeah. Foreigner. It's like seeing a, a tribute band, right? Well, yes. A tribute band with the best players you can imagine. Well, yeah. Like the drummer played for White Snake, singer, and the singer is tremendous yeah. singer, and uh, the bass player played for Dokken, and the guitar player played in Aerosmith for a while. So they're all tremendous players. But don't be surprised if this is the way of the future. That in 20 or 30 years, when bands are too old to do it, but people know the songs, people know the logo, you know, they know the. You know the Kiss logo. Yeah. Like, don't be surprised if Kiss is still playing. Well, yeah. In 30 years. And with Kiss, they don't even need any members because they're behind the makeup. It could be people playing the role well, of Kiss, right? Even Motley Crue. And I, I mean, I could yeah. be wrong here, but uh, look at someone like, um, you know, in the jazz field. If you look at, yeah. you know, the Buddy Rich oh, Big Band, sure. I think yeah. is out there. Yeah. And Count Basie, and you know, they have the name, they have the charts, they've got wonderful players, and if you're a fan, then it doesn't matter. So. That's, I wouldn't be surprised if eventually that happens in rock. How much different is it for you here in 2018 playing when maybe there's not the same pressure to impress a record company, to, to push records, to really generate that kind of revenue and stay relevant like it is in the 80s. Now you're doing it because you want to do it. Exactly. How much different is that for you? Tremendously different and, and so much less stress. I mean, there, we have our own levels of stress, of course, but uh, it's... It's tremendously, it's, it's 180 degrees different yeah. now. It, where you, in those days, you're fighting, and you're fighting to climb that ladder, and, and it's, without it being a competition, it is a bit of a competition sure. between other bands, and bands in a similar genre as yourselves, or even whatever. 
And when you put a record out, in those days, and today it's the same thing, you know, you're competing against everybody. Yeah. So, you know, when your album or CD or cassette goes on the rack at Sam's, it's right beside the U2 record or the Bruce Springsteen record. And so when someone comes in the record store, they have to make a decision on where they're going to spend their money. And that's totally fair. Can you imagine if you were trying to make it now? Because now the bands of 2018 are competing against all the other bands of 2018, but they're still battling Led Zeppelin, the Beatles, the Stones, yeah. Honeymoon Suite, it's all the hard. bands. Are, no, yeah. I can't. And because mu old music doesn't go away. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. True. Um, mind you, I think a younger audience, which is what we're appealing to, is looking for newer music, really. And, you know, and, and we'll always like our music from the 60s, 70s, 80s. Now, you talked about the 90s earlier, but there was some good stuff in the 90s that came out. There was a lot of good stuff in the 90s. And there's always good music coming out. And every era has its, its time. And, and usually it's three or four years and they move on. And what you want to do is be a little longer than that. And, and I, I tell people today, you know, you fight to get a record deal. Yeah. And we all did and we all, you know, you probably did as well. But you know, then I say, believe it or not, that's the easy part. Because now you got to convince people to buy your record. Yeah. And not just one record, you want them to buy five records right. or you don't ten want to be a one-hit wonder. No. And you guys had such a great debut album. I've been thinking, going into the studio to make the big prize, you're thinking, holy crap, the bar is already high. Well, I did, and uh, fortunately we had a great producer in Bruce Fairburn yeah. and a great engineer in Bob Rock. And uh, their vision of those songs and the sound uh, put together a great album. In my opinion, it's better than the first album. Ready to take the stage and have a good time tonight? Yeah. Talking to me, here? I imagine, takes the nerves away, right? No Sorry? Nerves. I said talking to me takes away those nerves, right? Oh, exactly. I'm going <laughs> to have a nap now. Yeah, well, enjoy the nap. Enjoy the gig. And uh, listen, thanks so much for doing this. I've been a fan of you and the band oh. since the beginning, and, and it's great to sit down and have a chat with you. Well, stay in touch. I'd love to talk yeah. anytime. Next time, we'll, we'll do a little sports talk. Please do. I'd love to. All right. All right. Thanks, pal. Cheers. Here's right. Dave Betts of Honeymoon Suite.